unfiltered. There is magic in the mundane, bliss in the banal. The day is your dharma. I'm your host, Amaryllis, Ayurvedic health counselor, yogini, and Akashic Records reader. And this is your life, Altered. Hello, welcome back to the Altered podcast with Amaryllis. Whatever time of day you're listening to this, uh, it's morning here. It's a Saturday morning and it's gorgeous. I'm in the Pacific Northwest and we've had so much sun, which has just been beautiful. So I'm recording this and as soon as I finish, I'm going to be heading outside. So wherever you're at as you're listening to this, sending you love and blessings. Thank you for listening. I also wanted to mention that I've set up PayPal and Venmo and I have the links in the show notes. So if you have been listening to this podcast and you feel that it's benefiting you and supporting you, informing you, inspiring you, and you'd like to say thank you and help support the podcast, then follow the link and make any contribution that feels appropriate to you. And you know, no matter what that is, I say thank you, thank you, thank you. It is much appreciated and helps keep the podcast going. I don't have ads or um, I'm not selling anything on the podcast, even my own stuff, but that's a way that you can say thank you and help support. So for today, I wanted to talk about, it's actually part one of two. Um, I love that I'm doing this because I'm making shorter podcasts nowadays And so I kind of break it up into parts instead of having an hour long podcast, they're more like 20 minute podcasts. So this one is on habits and when you're making changes in your habits and in your lifestyle, I'm bringing this up now because, you know, we've gone through the new year and then we revisited the new year and intention setting, um, a couple of weeks ago. And so I think it's still in people's minds about, you know, this intention setting and um, really putting into action, really instilling what they want into the physical. And that means into their life and lifestyle. So because of that, I wanted to go ahead and bring up these two, um, these two practices, but they're also mindset shifts like the practice itself involves a mindset shift that will help you to really bring in and keep, and that's the key word, to keep the practices that you want, the shifts that you want in your life. We know so many people set goals and intentions at the beginning of the year and it just all falls away. It's not even that it falls apart, it just falls away. And people go gung-ho at the first of the year and then it's too much. They can't really handle that kind of um, vigor and that overhaul that they were engaging in at the beginning of the year and so they just quit. And I mean, that happens year after year. We don't want that. We want the growth. We want the evolution. We want the change. We want the things that we want in our life. And, you know, we're kind of, because of our own beliefs and mindset, we're making it harder, if not impossible for ourselves and setting ourselves up for this cycle, this cycle, this cycle of never actually having it, bringing it into our daily life and practice. So I wanted to speak about two of those today. Before I get into those two, let me say that I am a huge proponent of, and I mentioned this before in the other intention setting podcasts, that I am a big proponent of asking for what you want, not setting intentions or goals about what you want to quit or stop. When you set your intentions and goals around what you want to stop. And a lot of it is about, it's just, it's really negative because it's like, I should, I'm supposed to, I need to, I ought to, all of this. It just instantly, it has this really heavy energy. You know, it's not coming from this place of desire and 
openness, like, ooh, I want. No, it's like, uh, I really have to, I really should. And it just feels so heavy. It feels oppressive. And that doesn't guide us through life. It doesn't open us up to life. So when you are setting intentions or goals that are based on this, I need to stop this, quit this, you're taking, you're bringing energy and focusing it on what you don't want and what you should stop and quit. And you're amplifying it because your focus is so singularly pointed at what you don't want, what I don't want, what I need to stop. You're amplifying it. So it just makes it even harder. And many other reasons why, you know, focusing on what you need to quit or stop uh, isn't helpful. I recommend, and I had mentioned also, you know, this is how I set my intentions on what I want, what I want to experience, what I, you know, what I'm wanting to bring in. And so I'm a huge fan of bringing in more of the good you know, quote unquote good. There's no judgment. It's just, you know, what helps you, serves you and what you want. I'm a fan of bringing in the good so much so that it ends up crowding out the stuff that you, that you don't want. So that the things that you're, you know, at this point thinking I should, I ought to stop and quit, they end up over time because you're bringing in so much other aligned, good, desired, wanted things that they just start falling away because there's no room for them to really grow and you're not engaging them and amplifying their energy and, you know, that's like food for them just to grow and strength and really deepen the roots so that it's so hard to pull them out. No, we, we just... We plant more and more and more of the beautiful flowers that we want so that eventually it, there's no space, there's no room, and you crowd out those things that you're trying to let go of. So I, I don't give them my focus. Okay, so that's that's my recommendation. You know, it's not one of the, the two habit change ideas that I'm going to share today. So the ones that I'm going to talk about, I learned a few years ago through a book by Kate Stillman. It's called Body Thrive. It's, um, the subtitle is Up Level Your Body and Your Life with 10 Habits from Ayurveda and Yoga. Kate Stillman is incredibly wise because she saw, she observed that there were all these things that people wanted to do and shift and change as she was leading programs to implement, you know, these Ayurvedic and yogic practices, but people were having a really hard time with it. And so before any of those things could be implemented, some habit change science had to come in before that to set the stage to say, hey, here are some things that happen when you want to change. And here's how we can work with that. And habit change science is a huge field these days. And I'm glad to see that it's growing because it's helping people make the changes that they want. So these two practices, um, I ended up teaching, you know, um, from this book and using these practices and guiding people through a program that I led a few years ago called Mama Thrive. It was amazing and wonderful. If you're listening and you were a part of that, thank you so much for being a part of that journey. Um, but I wanted to revisit these on the podcast. So the first one is B minus. B minus, like the letter B minus. So if you got those traditional grades in school, B minus. For a lot of people, even hearing that and saying, you know, feeling and thinking to themselves, I got a B minus, is like, no, that is not okay. That's not acceptable. No. And that's how, even if you didn't do it in school, that's how a lot of us operate in our daily life is that we feel like it has to be 
A+. Plus. It has to be A+, plus, or I shouldn't even do it at all. Why even bother doing it for less than an A+. Plus? Why does it even matter? What does it even count? I'm not going to do it unless I can do it A+. Plus. And so that whole mindset is an all or none mindset. You're either going to do it exceptionally well, or you're not going to do it at all. And what happens because of that mindset is most people end up in the not at all category. And so there's a whole lot of people that have a whole lot of things that they want to do, and they're not doing them at all. And I think that's really sad because the desire is there, the potential is there, but because they have this limiting belief of it has to be all or none, it has to be an A+, plus, then I'm not going to do it because it doesn't count. It doesn't matter. What good is it? It's very binary thinking, you know, one or zero. So when we bring in this idea, this mindset of B minus, it's essentially saying doing it for however long or to whatever degree is good enough because I'm doing it. That's really what matters here is that you're doing it. You're actually doing it. Even C, D, sure, because you're still doing it. That's really important. B minus still gets it done, still gets it engaged and moving through you and into your life. Whereas A plus doesn't. It, it's, again, in the nun pile. I love this story, and I, I cannot remember all the details of it. He's mentioned it a couple of times. Ramit Sethi has this story, and he works a lot with money and psychology. Um, and there was a story of uh, a woman who had written to him saying, you know, she really wanted to uh, run um, a certain number of miles every day. Um, and that that, or I'm sorry, each week, and that that really mattered to her. And so she was trying to do it a couple of days a week and, you know, she couldn't, it just wasn't happening. And he's asked, well, why not just start out with running one mile? And her response was, you know, cause he was trying to say, well, you know, if you're having a hard time doing it, at such a high level, this number of times per week, then why not just start, you know, really small? Why not just go for one mile, you know, a couple of times a week? And her response was, why would I even bother doing that? And that's exactly the mindset that I'm talking about, that if it can't be a plus, then it's nothing. And then there she is. And there, you know, we all are saying, yeah, but I want to, I want to, I want to, but it has to be at this level. It has to be at this caliber. It has to look like I envision it at its extraordinary best, or I'm just not going to do it. But we're not okay with not doing it because we want to do it. So there's this like friction we're standing in our own way. Of course, it feels terrible. But that mindset of, well, why would I even bother going out and just running one mile? Like, what's the point of that? The point is that you put on your shoes and you went outside and you went for a run. Because right now, you're not running at all and you're just beating up on yourself and being upset and sad and frustrated and shame spiraling and all these things. B minus gets it done. It doesn't make it perfect. And we all like, I, I highly recommend the book, The Gifts of Imperfection by Brene Brown. It, we, we're not looking for perfection. It doesn't exist. Perfectionism exists, but perfection doesn't exist. And so we're, whatever it is that we're wanting, we have an image of what it needs to look like. 
and it's probably an A++++ image. And this mindset shift will help move you out of your own way so that you get it done. Done is better than none. And so the thing is, given another year's time, this time next year, the people who stay in that A++++ mindset, it's still going to be none. They're going to have the same things, the same wants and desires on their sheet. And, you know, they're probably going to spend yet another year not getting it done in any way, shape or form. But the people who implement the B minus mindset, they're going to have little shifts, little shifts, little shifts. And by this time next year, they're going to look back and be like, oh my God, that was amazing. Like it didn't seem, you know, it kind of felt crappy when I was doing it at like a B minus or C that it's good enough just to do it. It's good enough just to kind of start in a smaller way but look at me now, look at what I'm doing. And you know what? I do it three times a week and I don't even think about it or, you know, it's, it's in my daily lifestyle and it's just there. And, you know, I'm at the point where I don't even, I don't have to try anymore. It's just a part of who I am. That is where B minus gets you. Take a moment to reflect, maybe even pause this recording to reflect and write down. I always recommend writing it down because the mind forgets. Write down, it conveniently forgets. <laughs> Sometimes it's strategically because then it keeps you stuck in the same place. So write it down, the things that you've been wanting to shift and change, do and experience, and how many of those have not happened because you have this image, this self-created image in your head of what it needs to be and look like all the shoulds and ought tos around it the a plus plus image and see which ones you know not all of them at the same time but see which ones you could say all right let's let's take this to a b minus let's take this to a c just so we're doing it And I think you'll find that even at a C level, just doing it, you're like, oh, it actually feels really rewarding and satisfying. Uh, You know, the, the women that I was leading through this program, I think the feedback that I got hands down was that this mindset shift will stay with them for the rest of their life. You know, I was teaching Ayurvedic Uh, practices to implement in your day. But they said this above all else would just stay with them for their life, for all aspects of their life. B minus. Okay. So the next one before I close up the podcast is a term called Kaizen. Kaizen. It's spelled K A I. Z E N. And it, um, I believe it's a Japanese word, and it's about applying continuous daily small improvements. This is piggybacking off of the B minus. So once you can kind of get to a place where maybe even you don't accept the B minus, but you do it anyway, you know, things are going to turn around for you. So the uh, Kaizen is about the small daily improvements. You may have heard a lot of people these days talking about 1% improvement and that you can leverage that 1% because you don't think 1% is really that much. It's so small, it seems insignificant, but you leverage that into a compound effect, like we think of compounded interest it adds up. So when you're thinking about your intentions and what it is that you're wanting, you're thinking with this Kaizen, what is the smallest, most incremental improvement 
or baby step that I could take today. The smallest. And the smallest meaning also the easiest. And it's so small that it's underwhelming to where, you know, you're thinking, yeah, 1%, what does that even matter? What does it matter? It can actually add up over time to change your life. I was reading um, a book, I think it was on Kaizen. Regardless, there was a story in there about um, someone who was really wanting to run on her treadmill. And so she, um, why are both of these about running? I don't know. I, that seems to be what our culture does is they want to run. Um, so she had this treadmill and it just sat there and never got used. Like then all this, you know, shame builds up around it. Like, oh, I bought it and it's here and it's just taking up space and I never get on it. And so I don't even want to look at it because every time I look at it, I feel bad because I'm not using it. So with this Kaizen approach, what she started doing was in the morning, she didn't run, right? Like the A plus plus is like, no, I'm going to start running on it five miles in the morning before I get in my shower. No, she decided with this small daily habit, she's like, well, you know, every morning I kind of, uh, I have my coffee and I kind of scroll through the news of the day or social or whatever. So she decided she was going to do that on the treadmill not walking on the treadmill, nothing, just standing on the treadmill. And I thought that was genius because the point isn't at this point for her to run on the treadmill. The point is for her to just get in the habit of going to the treadmill, to approach it and get on it. So every morning, you know, she, well, when she had her coffee, she just started going to the treadmill, standing on it and, you know, doing her scroll, doing her usual thing. And after a time, she started um, to turn it on and just walk, you know, really easy, slow walk because she's still scrolling. She's still drinking her coffee. But, you know, this wasn't over a week. This was a few weeks that she spent just standing on it. But it also reframed um, that relationship that she had with the treadmill because she was hating looking at it, but now she could look at it and it made her think of mm, morning time and like my social time. She didn't feel bad about looking at her treadmill anymore. And eventually, like I said, not after a week, but many, 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 many weeks, it started turning into walking. And then it turned after many, 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 many weeks into like a slow jog. And, you know, at that point she couldn't have the coffee and the scrolling anymore. So, and I think even then it turned into like a commitment. Like she was like doing amazing running on the treadmill. And I think even after that, she started, you know, getting off the treadmill and going outside and running. So the way she started to most people seems like, an F, right? Failed. Like, girl, get off that treadmill. You're not even using it. But that's the genius of it. She did do, you know, that F level. And she ended up changing everything because she was doing it. She got on the treadmill. So this small Kaizen change, the most underwhelming change. It was, I mean, honestly, so underwhelming. Um, but yet also so easy that over time it had that compound interest effect. Slow, not slow, excuse me, small daily consistent shifts that are so easy that are so underwhelming that it's just the easiest thing in the world for you to do. And over time, that is what adds up to making the bigger changes. Instead of 
having your intentions, whatever it is that you want and saying, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go big. It has to be this way. And then you try to jump into this huge training plan that involves a lot of time and energy and investment of, you know, money, just all these things. It's so big. It feels overwhelming. And what happens when most people feel that something's really overwhelming? They shut down. They shut down because they're like, I can't, I can't do it. Maybe I can do it for a little bit, but I can't sustain it. And so they shut down. They freak out, they shut down. And that's where we are, again, uh, in that nun pile. So Kaizen, whatever it is, if you take a look at your intentions and you're saying, oh, yep, I'm trying to do this really, really big and it's overwhelming me. Take it the smallest, smallest, even smaller, whatever you're thinking right now for whatever intention you're looking at or thinking of, even smaller. Because most people, when they think smaller, like what they have in their mind is so big that when they take it smaller, they only take it mm, maybe like down almost half. And that's not small enough. Smaller, 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 smaller. So that you look at what you've decided to do and you're like, that's so easy and that, uh, that it seems like it doesn't even matter. What I'm proposing to do now at this really, really tiny Kaizen minute level seems like it doesn't even matter. And that's where you start because it does matter because this is a mindset shift, right? It does matter. It's not going to matter in one day. Over time, it's going to matter a huge amount because truly starting with this Kaizen approach of tiny, tiny, tiny daily shifts can change your life. And I've, I've done it in my own life and, um, I've watched it happen with others that I've led and guided and coached it. You don't realize it until you look back. And so you want to be the person that's looking back saying, oh yeah, you know what? It all did count. Look at what it is now. That's amazing. You don't want to look back and be in that nun pile. And you're like, yep, I'm still just sitting here, not doing it and feeling bad about it. So take a moment to reflect after this podcast, listen to it again on B minus and Kaizen. The two really go together. You know, they're, they're kind of intertwined that you look at what it is that you're wanting and from A plus plus, you go to B minus or lower. And you look at the ways that you're trying to do it and implement it and achieve it, whatever. And you make it smaller, 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 so that it's easy. It's easeful. And over time, attainable. Let it underwhelm you. Because if you've been going the uh, go big or go home kind of route through life and you find that it's not really working out for you, do something different. Let this be an experiment. Just try it for six months. You know, this isn't forever. Just try it and see. See what happens. Okay, I will be back with part two next week. Thank you for listening. The links for supporting are below. If you are interested in contributing to the podcast to keep it going, thank you so much and blessings for your week. Remember that spirit guides but never decides. How will you choose this hour, this day, this week at the altar of your life? Thank you so much for listening. If you feel called, subscribe to the podcast, leave a review, and share it. Also, connect with me and discover more on Instagram at Amaryllis underscore Fernandez. Until next time.